Allah Azza wa Jal, brothers and sisters, sent down the Qur'an so that we reflect and ponder upon it. كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ This is a blessed book which we sent down upon you that they might reflect upon its verses. Today, I would like for us to reflect upon a set of verses because Allah Azza wa Jal in them clarified the path of salvation and a way to prosperity. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Qad aflaha al mu'minun. The believers will certainly succeed. Allah begins with giving glad tidings of success without and before mentioning conditions that need to be fulfilled or qualities that have to be met in order to encourage us to read and act upon what comes after that. هم في صلاتهم خاشعون. They who are during their prayer are humbly submissive. Submissiveness during Salah. Ibn Juzay, the famous scholar of Tafsir, said, Submissiveness is a state of the heart in which the heart is fearful of Allah, watchful of Allah, and humble before His might and greatness which reflects on the body and the limbs, causing them to become tranquil and calm during prayer. And reflect on the heart, on the brain, and makes it focused, and concentrate on the prayer, and not be preoccupied with anything else outside the prayer. The result of that, it reflects back on the heart, and makes the slave cry before Allah Azza wa Jal and supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal. It is only this type of prayer that becomes or that is a source or the source of comfort which was stated by the Prophet Sallallahu as in the narration reported by Al-Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ Comfort for me was placed in prayer. My delight is in praying. See, a prayer without submissiveness is like a body without a soul. The prayer become, becomes mere actions or movements of the body. Ibn al-Qayyim said, Salatun bila khushu'in kal badani bila ruh ka badanin mayyit. The prayer without submissiveness is like a dead body without a soul. Then he goes on to say, وَلَا يُثِيبُهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا Allah will not reward the slave for it. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that in the book of Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, and it was classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said, The slave, he or she, will conclude the prayer and will only get one tenth of their prayer recorded for them. One ninth, one eighth, one seventh, until he said one half of his prayer. Submissiveness is very crucial during our prayers. Must be met in order for us to taste that sweetness of being in contact with Allah Azza wa Jal. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Second quality. 
And they who are, who turn away from ill speech. Ibn Kathir said, ill speech includes everything from shirk to sinful talking like lying or backbiting or tail bearing or immoral speech and so on and so forth. Ibn Juzay said this is achieved, turning away from it is achieved by two things. Not indulging, not taking part of it or in it rather, and refraining from listening to it. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ And those who are observant of zakah. The majority of the scholars of tafsir, as Ibn Kathir stated, are of the opinion that this refers to paying zakah on wealth. However, there are some scholars who said something that's very beautiful. And it actually coincides with the meaning of the word zakah. The, the word zakah in Arabic literally means to purify. And paying zakah on wealth is a purification of the wealth. So some scholars said, this means that they are keen on purifying their souls. And as the famous rule in tafsir, when there are two different interpretations of the verse, which do not contradict one another, then both can be taken as the meaning of the verse. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And those who guard their private parts. But so that we don't think that this is all encompassing and it includes all types of people, Allah explains, إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ إِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُ Except from their wives, or what their right hands possess, female slaves, whenever that is applicable, which is not the, the state of uh, our era right now. They will not be blamed. Whoever seeks beyond that are the transgressors, are those who transgress the limits and the boundaries of Allah. Part of preserving or guarding one's private parts is refraining from anything that leads to that. Gazing at the opposite sex. And this is addressing both men and women, females and male, males alike. Gazing at the opposite sex, being in seclusion, chatting on Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever social media means. Because that... It leads to a state of compassion and romance, depending on how weak the heart is. And then the dominoes effect starts. It starts with this, and then if one is not careful, he or she will find themselves in bed with someone doing haram. Guarding one's private parts, means refraining from fulfilling the desire through any haram means. And included in this is masturbation. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ And those who fulfill their trusts and their promises. So they refrain from the qualities of hypocrites. As stated by the Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, when he mentioned the qualities of hypocrites, he said, when they promise, they betray, and when they are entrusted, they breach. As Sa'di rahmatullah alayhi said, this is general, including covenants with Allah Azza wa Jal and with slaves. With Allah, by fulfilling His commandments and refraining from what He prohibited. And with the slaves, by staying away from breaching uh, trusts or promises and being negligent and not fulfilling them because this is haram. 
وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ And those who carefully preserve their daily prayers. How? By continuously praying them on time, fulfilling their preconditions, their obligations, their pillars. And notice, brothers and sisters, how Allah Azza wa Jal listed this set of six qualities, praiseworthy qualities, which He made a means of success to the believers, starting with prayer and ending with prayer, only to reflect the greatness and the lofty rank and status of this act of worship, as-salah. <coughs> as because the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Ibn Majah, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, know that the best of your deeds is praying. And because it will be, it will be on the day of judgment, the criterion of success, as the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is also reported by Ibn Majah, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, on the day of judgment, the first thing the slave, he or she, will be held accountable for is the prayer. If it is complete and in order, then he has succeeded. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, to enable us to fulfill these qualities. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد. After listing these qualities, Allah Azza wa Jal said, أولئك هم الوارثون. Those are the inheritors. They will inherit what? الذين يرثون الفردوس. They will inherit الفردوس. The Prophet ﷺ stated, and this is reported by Ibn Majah, classified as authentic by Albani, that every soul has two spots, a spot in Jannah and a spot in the fire of hell. Then he says, if one dies and he enters fire, his spot in Jannah will be inherited by the people of Jannah. Because you see, the number of, or the ratio of Jannah to fire, to hell, is 1 to 99, as the Prophet ﷺ said. For every thousand, one will be admitted into Jannah and 99 will be thrown in the fire of hell. So those who will be in hell are going to be 99, 999 multiples of those in Jannah, so their spots of in Jannah will be inherited by the people of Jannah according to each person's rank with Allah. Some people might get double the reward. Some people might get a hundred thousand multiples of the reward according to what we do in this dunya. Firdaus. Firdaus is... It's not a minor issue, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari. When you ask Allah, when you supplicate, ask Allah for Al-Firdaus. Why? He said, because it is the highest spot in Jannah and the best in Jannah. From it gushes the rivers of Jannah, and above it is the throne of the All-Merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to work for that. هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They will dwell therein eternally. They will never wish or think of asking to be removed from it. They will eternally live in bliss and enjoyment. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal al-Firdaus al-A'la. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-Firdaus al-A'la min al-Jannah. Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna wa aafina wa aafu anna. اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات وأقل الصلاة